Hello and welcome to the Grenade Creations podcast. This is episode 45. My name is Kirsty and I am coming to you from the west coast of Scotland, United Kingdom. I have a little friend sneaking around the room and he may or may not try and stand on the laptop on a second. So if you see a big smudge, it's Monty. What you doing? I used to sniff in the laptop. But yeah, hi everybody, welcome back to the Grenade Creations podcast. As I've said, welcome to. <laughs> Come on, keep going, keep going. <laughs> and he's out. Yeah, so welcome to any new viewers and welcome back to any returning viewers. I never normally say that, but it seems quite fitting because. Um, I'm very thankful to the people that continually come back and watch me talk and speak completely garbage and if anyone new comes along, welcome. I hear my accents pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> this isn't a podcast about accents, it's not a podcast about my cat walking in front of the camera. This is a knitting, spinning and generally crafty podcast and with that we'll jump straight in. Uh, I guess we should start with what I'm wearing. I am wearing a shawl I knit and finished last year. I can never get it to sit quite right. And it is made out of 10 20 gram minis from Mothy and the Squid. This is in her cupcake mini scheme. Excuse me, got hiccups. Um, it's in her cupcake mini skein set and I love this shawl to pieces. It's one of the, oh, I'm strangling myself. It's one of the shawls where one side is longer than the other. Is that asymmetric we call that? So it starts in the blue, goes to green, yellow, orange, pink and purple. I can't count, I don't think that's 10. I think it's only seven. Oh, I don't know. Seven or eight. Uh, I love this shawl to pieces. I think it's a great layering piece. I love how bright and colourful it is. Um, other people have commented on just how awesome and colourful it is and other people stare at me and look, make me look like I, make me think I look ridiculous, but natural fact, it is a pretty awesome shawl and anyone would be happy to have this. So I keep telling myself. Oh, no, I shouldn't have done that because now I'm not going to get to sit properly. Anyway, so yeah, that's what I'm wearing. I'm also wearing my Venom um, sweatshirt that's massively big for me. Um, but who doesn't love a massive oversized sweatshirt? But yeah, let's get into finished objects because I actually have two. Neither of them have their ends woven in, neither of them have been blocked. One of them I don't think I will bother blocking, the other one certainly needs a good block. So the first one, if anyone remembers that's a returning viewer, I was trying to get some whips off my needles. Um, I wouldn't really say they were long languishing whips, but I was still trying to get some things off the needles before I felt like I wanted to cast something on. I'm not saying I needed to um, cast things off in order to cast things on, I just would prefer to have some empty project bags. So again, another one-sided, one longer side shawl than the other. And this is the Playful Knitted Shawl uh, by Verity of Truly Hooked. Starts at this point. Uh, the pattern called for five 20 gram mini skeins. I used 10 10 gram mini skeins and this is not in the pattern, this end bit from here to the bottom of the pink. Um, this is me wanting to use up as much of the yarn as I possibly could and yeah. I love the colours. Again, I'm loving the whole bright minis. These are mini schemes from Love Bug Yarns. The maker behind that is Diana. And these were gifted to me as a lovely surprise. 
The cream yarn is a Mystery Unknown Lace Weight Held Double that I brought back from Woolfest in Cockermouth. And yeah, got lots of ends to weave in. Monty Cyper. That's Monty. Yeah, it not look like I've got horns coming out of my head. It's all good. Uh, so yeah, lots of ends to weave in. I'll get around to that eventually. I don't feel the need to block this. I think it's going to be just nice as it is. And again, I can't wait to wear this one because again, it's just really nice and bright and colourful. So shawl number one. Do you mind? Show number two was started and finished without you guys even knowing about it. Um, the lovely Gemma and Ellen. So Gemma of the project bag and Ellen of and I am so sorry I can't say the um, your actual Instagram name, but it's Mrs Lamb Yarns. Makes me sound like such a bad friend. I'm sorry. Um, they were doing a well backstory. Gemma gave, decided that for Lent she was going to give up casting on projects and my understanding is Ellen suggested a kind of cast on, fin I can't think of the word, extravaganza, for some reason I thought that began with F. Um, Ellen suggested a cast on extravaganza and they decided to share the fun with anybody that wanted to get involved. So it became the Project Lamb cast on party and they done a Instagram live to get this kicking off on the first day, which was Monday before uh, Pancake Day. So was that the 5th of March? And then they done a Zoom room on the Tuesday for anybody that wanted to join. So I decided that I would be continue with using up my stash and I would also use patterns that I already have in my library uh, just to kind of save a couple of pennies and I cast on The Bad Nut Shawl by Josh Rakes. The yarn looks very crazy. This definitely needs blocked. Like if I was to stretch this out, that's how it is just now. Whereas I can really give this a good sturdy block. Um, so the yarn is Caterpillar by Martin's Lab. I I have some criticisms for the yarn and I will insert a picture here. And you'll see why. Uh, for the entire five days that I had this on the needles, I constantly had greeny blue fingers. The yarn was just transferring really, really badly. And it just made me look really dirty because it wouldn't come off very easily. And it was really, really quite annoying. So this is meant to be a crescent shaped shawl. And I'm not really sure if this is just going to be like a blocking thing or not, but you cast on a hundred stitches. So that's that. And then you start expanding it at the side. So I think I'm going to have to do some really interesting blocking to kind of get rid of this, essentially a point. So I'm going to have to really try and bring this up and have it as a continual line. So I mean like even here you can see the difference like this is your cast on here where my pinky's moving up and down and then this is obviously the rest of the show. Loved the pattern, loved the yarn in a skein, didn't love working with the yarn purely because it transferred. I'm hoping when it gets a good block it's not going to fade too much from the colour coming out because I really love I don't know how well it's coming up on the camera because I'm kind of looking towards the sun. Um, but yeah, annoyingly, I didn't have quite enough yarn. Um, so it called for two skeins of yarn that were 250 meters DK weight. 
it turns out a lot of people in the UK only do skeins that are like 200, 200 or 220 meters. So I was I was off for the bottom and that was fine. I was just like, oh, I'll just I'll just make it up as I go along. I'll do a different cast off. And that's exactly what i done. i done an extra stretchy cast off uh, instead of the cast off that's called for in the pattern. I'm very happy with it. I just need to block it because the the bottom of the shawl is curling really quite badly but like I say I need to give this a good block and stretch it out because it has the potential to grow a lot and because it's a DK weight shawl it's going to just be so nice in winter just to throw on. I mean look, look at that the potential for this to grow is amazing. So that will be getting put on the blocking boards soonish and um, we'll see how it goes we'll see how it fares when it gets put excuse me more hiccups when it gets put in water i might actually record that when i'm doing it so that you guys can see if there is exceptional amount of bleeding uh, it's a shame because this was my first experience with Martin's Lab yarn. Uh, I'd heard a lot of good things. I picked this yarn up last year at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Um, so it's um, it's not a deep stash dive, but it's, it's certainly still stash that I'm using. So yeah, uh, I have essentially only two works in progress. So moving on to works in progress. And the first one is not very exciting. It is the second sock. This is some of opal yarn with some sparkle in it. Uh, not loving working with the sparkle. Uh, I feel that, let's see if I can, like, I feel that you have to push the yarn down. And then if you see here how it's kind of building up, uh, because of how the sparkle's been put in. So you ha I feel like I have to push the yarn down to kind of get the same tension as the strand of sparkle. Don't know if that makes sense, and it'd be interesting to see if anyone else has a very similar issue. Uh, but I'm doing my standard sock for myself. I do 64 stitches. Um, I do a, quite a stretchy cast on. I prefer heel flap and gusset. Uh, for this one, I increase two stitches on the whole thing because I feel like I sometimes struggle with the socks when it comes to this section, trying to get it on my foot. And then um, I pick up an extra one, an extra stitch in here so I don't get a gap. And then I decrease all of those extra stitches around about here once I've done the gusset. So yeah, um, I have this normally in my bag. This is my day-to-day -day knitting when I'm at work, uh, so on my lunch break or when I like, arrive early in the office. Um, it's not seen too much love. I don't get that much time to knit. I'm still on a phase return to work, so I don't have my full hour lunch. And the yarns can also put me off a little bit. But yeah, second sock. This is the first one. Just to prove there is a sock. I like the colours. They kind of feel like wacky, spacey, spacey socks. Don't know why that's so hard for me to say. Spacey socks. But yeah, second sock. And then I am also going to a christening the day after Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And I decided that what better way to attend a christening than to give a hand made present. So I am working on a, sh no, not a shawl, I'm working on a blanket and I'm making it up as I go along. I have a few balls of Sardar Flutterby, so I think it's Sardar, no it's not, it's James C. Brett. I have a couple of balls of James C. Brett Flutterby to use up. It's very, very soft, it's meant to be really good for babies because of the touch sensation. And so I have decided that I'm going to start the blanket um, with a thicker, I've, I've yet to add to this, 
a thicker band of double crochet, um, American, um, I do the American side of the, of, oh, right, is it a double crochet? No, the half double. Uh, I do the American style, I don't know, stitches, I do the American stitches for crochet, so it's just how I learned, I never really figured, I never really knew there was a difference between the UK side and the US side, so when I learned I um, went on YouTube and a lot of the videos are American people teaching, so I um, learned, I do the American stitches, so I've done I don't know how many long, but I'm working on double cro half double crochets. I'm gonna get the band to about, maybe about here. And then my plan is to have little granny squares just like this in the pink and the purple, and then have it so it'd be pink, purple, pink, purple, purple, pink, purple, pink. And then another band, and then some more granny squares, and then another band. That's the plan. You are about to see Monty again. Monty and all his magnificence somehow managed to turn the camera off. So as I was saying, the plan is to do a band of cream crochet and then mixture of pink and purple granny squares and then more ba another band and then more granny squares and then another band. And then it'd be really awesome if I could get some white and then go around the complete outside or I don't know. I'm not really, I don't really know the right things to give other people for their children. I don't have children, but if it's someone I'm particularly close to, I can have another, I have a good idea of what to give them. But if it's not someone I'm particularly close to, then you're kind of shooting in the dark as to whether or not they're going to like it. Um, so yeah, working on that as well. That needs to get finished within the next week and a bit because it needs to be finished for taking to the christening on Sunday the 24th. So I would like it finished, um, I'd say the Wednesday before UIF. So that's being held in a very large bag that was made by my friend David. My mum originally bought it and then she was having a D stash of all her bags and I don't actually have large project bags. I have I have quite small project bags. So that's my other work in progress. And uh, essentially I have a third work in progress, but it's been in the naughty corner for about three weeks now, maybe two. I don't know, whenever I last recorded, it's been in the naughty corner since then. This little cute guy, girl, it's my mouse, uh, was gifted to me by Jen when I was over in Florida. I love it. It's a sum sum. Uh, I think it's adorable. So yes, for anyone that remembers, I don't even know if I want to take out my bag. It's, that's how much is in the naughty corner. It pains me to do this. Who that was or is a regular viewer remembers this. So I am dropping needles. Ugh. I wonder if that's my 2.75s. <sighs> Monty's trying to steal my needles. Monty's in play mode. It pains me to talk about this. It really does. I was so excited at the potential of being able to wear this at Edinburgh this year. So excited. And then I finished the sleeves. And I was like, yes, I only have so much of the body left to do and then the ribbing and then I'm done. And then I tried it on and the sleeves were too short and the 
body was too tight and I just kind of put it in a bag turned to some of the girls and I was just like oh has anyone got really good sweater skills and can help is there a way for me to essentially not have to rework six inches of twisted rib again so Ellen being the shining star that she is said that I can essentially put a needle in it and then put another needle a row or two up cut knit and I don't know what's that word I don't know, kind of like Kitchener Stitch, but not Kitchener Stitch. Stick the two together. There we go. <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, so yeah, Ellen says that I can just do that. So put two needles in with a couple of rows between them, cut them, and then this part, the, the six inches of twisted rib, because I was numpty to say twisted rib was a good idea, um, will be unharmed and then I can stick the two together and essentially kind of uppy doony kitchener stitchy type thing. So technical here aren't we? Um, and then basically mend the two together. So I've still to do it to be fair and my heart is not in it. I'm not comfortable. I don't mind cutting my knitting. There's a big difference between cutting a whole um, for an afterthought heel and cutting an entire part of my sleeve off. The body however was a much easier decision. I stuck a needle in hence the severe cinching in and I've started unwinding the yarn and I stopped because it was really hurting my wrist and it was getting really late at night. So the plan is to rip back a fair amount. I'm talking like there was a lot of inches of knitting in this and it was quality knitting time that's just gone down the drain. So as you can see I've got my cable in so I'm going to rip back to there and then I'm going to do a series of increases and then I'm gonna just kind of have it as a flared body which is what I should have done in the first place but I guess past self was cocky about the fact she'd lost a bit of weight and didn't think that I would put on so much that I did. I think I put on about two stones since the, I, I first cast this sweater on. I'm not ashamed to admit that. If anyone thinks to start mocking me for it, oh you're going to see the true squish side of me. I'm kidding. I'm too much of a scaredy cat to confront people. Um, but yeah, I'm not ashamed of the fact I've put weight on. I'm annoyed that I didn't consider it when I was knitting this. I'm also kind of annoyed I don't get to wear Edinburgh, but I do get to wear my cumulus, which I don't really think you guys can see. No, it's not going to adjust the, the exposure. But yeah, Monty sat on my finished shawls. Is that comfortable? And now I'm blowing it. So if I turn away, you can see the cumulus. There we go. I just look really pale. Uh, so yeah, I am truly gutted about the sweater. It's not be all and end all. It's just a shame that it happened and I didn't think about it. Uh, the, sh shot, the sweater is still in the naughty corner because I have a secret top secret test knit thing to get on the needles that I can't show you until the end of April and I would rather work on that than work on that because this is in the naughty corner I don't really want to touch it I don't really want to look at it just now I am really kind of bummed out about it I'm not gonna lie but anyway this has been a really Debbie Downer of a podcast so why don't we show off some pretty things that we got I think I showed these off in the last podcast. I remember showing this off. This is yarn from Mrs. Lamb Yarns, that is Ellen. 
And even though I showed it off in the last podcast, you get to see it all again in all its glory. Still haven't decided what I'm going to make with this. Probably going to put it in a multiple skin show. And I also now have a feeling, yeah, I showed these off as well. <laughs> I have no acquisitions to show off at all. It's not until I get to show them that I'm like, oh yeah, I've done this in the last podcast. My memory is atrocious. But yeah, soak these up in all their glory as well because these are yarns from Lovebug Yarns, which is Deanna. And this is in the La Catrina colorway and I really, really love these. I have decided that these are destined for a eyeball shawl by Stephen West. Um, which is really interesting because as I said in my last podcast, I'm not the biggest shawl person, but um, Lee's and a few others has really talked me into the eyeball show. And I decided that who wants a normal like white of the eye? Why not go proper all out and just go seriously crazy colour? And it just happens to be enough yardage for the show for that section. See, I checked. But these are new stash. I am trying to work with old stash and I am also trying to work with patterns I already have or have been gifted. So this isn't getting cast on for a while. Which I'm okay with. Genuinely okay with that. Because I'm trying to be smart. I'm trying to keep money for Edinburgh. I'm trying to save money so that Scott and I can move out um, into our own flat. If that didn't make sense. Um, we both live with our parents so we're trying to move in together. And I'm also just trying to be really good with my money this year. I have serious spending problems. That makes me sound like I've like I'm in serious trouble. I don't. I just don't have any willpower when it comes to food and craft stuff. It doesn't have to be yarn. I it just has to be craft stuff. So I am working on a new bag design that I'm not going to show off. I have no intentions of showing it off until I plan on launching it. I am working on some of my original bag designs and I am also, oh sorry, I've progressed onto life stuff in case nobody had noticed. Um, I'm also in the process of about to start working from home for my company. Uh, I have a full time job outside of my crafts and my bags and <coughs> my voice is going. So yeah, I have a full time job. And they are doing a pilot, or they were doing a pilot, they're now rolling it out to anybody that wants it in the company uh, that can work from home. So I went out and I bought a brand new desk and I start working from home on the 21st or the 22nd. 21st. But I'm off on the 22nd, it's in on the 23rd, I've got a christening on the 24th and I'm off on the 25th. So I... Technically, I'm not going to start working from home until the 26th. I'm really looking forward to it. For some old time viewers, you'll know I have multiple health problems and knowing that I'm going to be working from home is just going to be amazing. It's going to help my anxiety. It's going to then have a knock on effect on all my other health problems. And I mean that in a good way. So yeah, um, I'm going to have a really hard time getting Monty off my shawl. I just realised that was an extreme close up of my face. I am so sorry. Nobody wants that. Hi. Look at those eyes. Who's a pretty boy? <laughs> Let's not give me another close up of my face. That was not pretty. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to call it. Um, time on this podcast I don't really have anything else to say I really want to get into my jammies and do some crafting because it's been a very long two weeks I say two weeks it's been a very long two days my car okay I'm not done let's keep going if you're not happy with the more rambly section thanks for watching <laughs> uh but yeah about a year ago somebody crashed into my car Nothing serious, like I didn't have to go through my insurance or anything, it's just my wing mirror cover broke, it shattered and I left it, didn't 
I was like, oh, yeah, I'll get a new cover, come pay day. That's fine. Pay day came and went, like, 12 times over. And um, nothing bad happened. I didn't think anything of it. And then we got hit with a really bad storm um, on Monday. And <clears throat> as I was heading out to an appointment, I kind of looked down in the footwell of my car and I was like, oh my God, why is this so wet? Like, why is there so much water? And I had some tissues and stuff. So I put it down. I was like, yeah, that's fine. It'll soak it all up. We're good. And then when I got back home after my appointment, I looked down and I was like, picked up the tissue and it's absolutely soaking. Like it was dripping with water. I was just like, oh, this isn't good. Like, where's all this water coming from? And it did not occur to me, like genuinely did not occur to me that it could be coming from the wing mirror. So I was pure panicking that there could be a hole in my car or that the water was coming through somewhere, like the sealant on the door was gone bad. And then later that night, I kind of told my mum about it and she's like, I think it's coming from your wing mirror. So I grabbed the duct tape, I grabbed a kind of like a freezer bag, like, and some scissors, ran down to my car. It was absolutely chucking it down weather wise. It was so cold, it was so windy. And I done a kind of patch job on my wing mirror as best I could. And that seemed okay. <clears throat> I put a towel down in the footwell to kind of try and soak it up and also to keep an eye on the amount coming in. So the Tuesday comes around and the towel is damp. It's not completely soaking, it's damp. And I was like, right, okay. On Wednesday, I'll take a new towel down and we'll see how we get on for a couple of days. And I got into the car this morning with my new towel and put the new towel down and then I looked at the wing mirror and the duct tape had started coming up. So all my hard work seemed to be for nothing because the weather today has been absolutely horrific. It's been constant on off showers and when it is showering it is pouring. So it's not just light rain, this is absolutely soak you to the bone pouring wet rain. And I started panicking that because the duct tape was coming up then my car was just going to keep going in this loop. So I got onto a website, I ordered two covers. I was going to try and wait till payday, which is not very long away, but I've just kind of bitten the bullet, got two that will not match the colour of my car at all, but I need something. And I was just like, right, okay, I'll fix this when I get home. When I got home, I just happened to have a really good period of time where the sun was out, it wasn't that cold, it certainly wasn't wet. So I took off the old cover that I had on and I put a freezer bag on like completely over the wing mirror and tied it and then I started securing it with tape, cut the circle for the mirror so that I can't get done by the police or anything like that <clears throat> and then secured it down and put the, tape, put the tape into the mirror, not on the mirror but just into it and touch wood that will hopefully last me until the covers arrive which could probably be about monday because it's thursday today so yeah and then i've got some few other things going on as well and i'm just like eh so i just want my jammies and knitting time because i've not really had the chance to knit much this week but when i say knitting time i probably mean crochet because i really need to make a start on this crochet blanket there's something about obligation crafting that doesn't sit well with me. Even though this was my idea, I'm still kind of like, eh, it's not for me. Does anyone else get that? Anyway, rambled on far too long about stuff nobody cares about. So it is time to sign off and I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you when I see you. Come say hi to me if you see me Edinburgh because I'm probably not going to record before Edinburgh but I'm certainly going to be recording at Edinburgh. So yeah, long way of saying, talk to you later. Me again. I knew there was something I forgot to talk about. So, I was watching the Nick Girls podcast. I don't think that's on camera. Uh-oh. Do, do, do.
it's a claw. <laughs> ah, no. You need to stab your nose. Careful. Careful. No stabby. Yeah, anyway. Um, I was watching the Negros podcast um, and Leslie was talking about something she had found and it was to knit two socks at a time <clears throat> not on magic loop or on like separate circular needles and I was really intrigued by this so I followed the pattern that she talked about I decided to cast it on and I have essentially the start of two socks in one. Don't know how I feel about it. Uh, whenever I'm not that I've not not on it. Not that I've not on it. Not that I've knit on it this week. But when I was knitting on it, I found that I was really kind of chopping and changing between trying to knit continental and trying to knit with one yarn in one hand and one yarn in the other hand, which to me is very strange and um it's something that i would need a lot of practice with and i'm fine with that i'm willing to try and put in the time but just now i just don't have the time to work on it but i thought i'd show it off regardless so i will put the link in the description box as to where you can find this this is on ravelry and essentially how you work it is um I couldn't figure out the way that it's in the pattern, so I had to do the opposite way, which is you cast on the stitches for one sock, you cast on the stitches for the other, and then you start transferring one and one until you have all your stitches. And I'm knitting this in DK. I know these are going to be absolutely huge, uh, but I just wanted to try it. Uh, they're being knit on, apparently, knit prosings on a 4mm. I say apparently, that's a story for another day. I guess maybe not. Um, it's a story for today. Um, when I, I was working with these, didn't think anything of it, or at least it was the Net Pro Zings circulars, so it was, it was still Zings, and I decided that I didn't really like the drag on the metal, I do prefer wooden needles, I prefer my Net Pro Symphonies, and I decided that I would get another pair to replace what I was working with. And I used my needle gauge and I got another pair of four millimeters and I started working and it was kind of sitting there feeling with it. I was like, this needle seems thicker. My stitches look bigger. What the heck is going on? And that's when I got my needle gauge out again. I put these through. These say four millimeter on the needle. On a Knit Pro needle gauge, they're a 3.75. What the heck? Four millimeter on the needle, knit pro needles, knit pro needle gauge says it's a 3.75. Where are we meant to go with? And then I used knit pro wooden needles, which I'm pretty sure are the symphonies, and I used a four millimeter there. How can knit pro get it so wrong? Oh, I think Monty's going to really try it. No, last time you turned the camera off. All right, go play with it over here. Come on. Play with it over here. There you go. Um, I'm just really confused and it's really infuriating because I had to go back onto my project and like the gauge just went completely off. Only time you'll hear me mention the word gauge. If you bite this, you will break your teeth. There you go. With it there. Yeah, has anyone else experienced that? Because it really, really bugged me and I now feel like I want to go out and buy new needles and try and like I, I loved oh that was a bad idea. Well that's your own fault, you should have dropped it. Ugh. Got it. <sighs> I'm sorry for this podcast. It's not my usual standard. I've had a very funny week. Anyway, 
If anyone else has had this issue, please let me know. Um, I don't know whether it reached to Net Pro or what, but I'm assuming that considering everyone is quite obsessed with the zings, I'm not maybe the first person to notice this. I just find it really odd that, um, no, no, do not bite the yarn. He is really hyper. I can't even put it down the desk because he'll just steal it. I'll just hug it. I'm hugging the yarn. I just find it really interesting that I was using Knit Pro across all options. So Knit Pro Zings, Knit Pro Symphonies and a Knit Pro Needle Gauge. So how is it so different? How can they get that so wrong? That's a whole needle size down. That can really throw off someone's project. Thankfully what I was working on was kind of like, I don't know, I can't even remember what it was. I think it was just like some sort of scrappy thing I was working on. I don't know. But that's really going to mess somebody up. Okay, I'm done.